well that's it guys this is the this is where the machine will be working unfortunately it was I could not show you unloading because, <laughs> because it was crazy I'll tell you in a second uh, but basically yeah I had to drive the machine on off the trailer but these guys they uh, they helped me they basically he says I can go inside and I can straighten the wheels because I showed them that you know the front axle the wheels were turned right and I said I'm not even sure which way you, you're supposed to turn the steering wheel it's now you know backwards right <coughs> it's you know it's dangerous it's a big machine and so the guy says okay I can I can go inside I can start the machine and I can straighten the wheels and I can lock I can lock uh, the um, the 4x4 steer oh wow check this out this is how they load them over here it's kind of like a gas station wow I never saw something like this before so this is where they They unload or they or they load what are they, doing? Are, are they doing over here but how how do they get the let's say fuel how do they get the fuel out does it go in the ground somehow I don't see any pipes at the top but this is massive look at this there's so many positions right like 15 or 20 Oh, there's a there's a there's a big hose or pipe right there I'm guessing that's how they connect it to the to the truck I don't know honestly I'm not quite sure what they're doing here but I know it's something to do with oil because you see all these huge tankers and there's a shuttle wagon over there I saw it was moving uh, some some cars and so this guy says uh, we're gonna go through the site he says it's fast that you'll end up right on the highway but he says I have to escort you so let me see that's why I'm just following him and I booked a hotel I booked a hotel in in uh, Lloydminster well I just stopped here before the turn on highway 16 and I already sent all my paperwork to the broker to his customer you know load delivered uh, took a picture Again, my booster it was going sideways a little bit um, so yeah it's too late to get paid today so I'll be paid tomorrow uh, for this so now I'm going to a nice nice hotel I need to do my need to do my paperwork for for January and I don't I don't want to go that way but there's nothing that way unless you go all the way to Saskatoon oh shoot and I'm, I'm blocking the rim here
didn't see anything with the with the with the belt buckled in. Oh, I think now it's straight. Basically, what happened is I raised the front of the trailer because I thought maybe there'll be some you know snow banks, and when you raise the front, that puts all the weight on the booster. And I think I left it in position six, like the hole, position six. And so when I saw it was going sideways empty, I went, just before I was leaving, I started my PTO and I dropped the front of the trailer to position one because I'm empty now. I, I don't need to be too tall. And in the back, I dropped to position five out of uh, hole number six. I went to hole number five. So basically now there's uh, hardly any air in the booster. But yeah, so it's one of those cases where you know the actual event went much easier than the, I spent half a night, you know, tossing and turning, and then I got up at five o'clock. I started watching again uh, videos on YouTube. I was trying to find a manual for this uh, shuttle wagon and found a couple of websites where they had the manual but in order to download it you have to register you have to give them your email address and then of course they'll start sending you spam and uh, but yeah those guys were really helpful you know they said yeah we can they said we can help you we just we don't want to drive it off the trailer, but we can start it, we can set it up so the axle is blocked. And he was asking me, he says, uh, which axle you want to be steerable? The, the front one facing the rear of the trailer or the, the one closer to your truck? And I said, maybe, you see, like it gives you so many options, right? So this thing can go sideways if you want to use two axle steering but I said no please lock lock the axle in the front like towards the rear of the trailer like the front of the machine I said this way it'll be like driving a car um, you know and so the only thing I did not like is that when you're driving you have to sit sideways otherwise you cannot see anything and I was pushing the brake with my left foot because otherwise it's hard to you know turn like this and the the steering selection I would never find it because it, it turns out it was not a button on the dash it was a touch control on the screen because I saw the guy going there and just takes one touch and you can quickly switch to all axle steering uh, rear axle steering front front axle steering uh, actually it was pretty cool and I asked him, I said, can I climb in? I just want to see what you're doing there, just in case I need to do it myself again. And he says, yeah, just basically, once it started, and the machine surprisingly started with no issues. Once it started, he warmed it up. And then you just push your foot on the service brake so that the machine doesn't move. And then you push the P button, parking. And he says it's a bit tricky, you have to push a couple of times basically until the light goes off. And once it's off and you're holding it with a service brake, like in my case with my left foot for some reason, you click R of F forward. And what was confusing for me to me, I said, what are these arrows? Like there's N for neutral, R for reverse, and F for forward. But then right next to it, there's two arrows, one pointing like this and one pointing like this. And he says, oh no, those are gears. He says, you don't need those. So basically, it's just two buttons. You, uh, with your foot on the service brake, you unlock the parking brake. And then you just touch, in my case, reverse. Because I was driving backwards. And, uh, and so... I put these extra boards under, they really helped, and then uh, I didn't even use, I didn't even need to use uh, the throttle, you know, I was just holding the brake, and the guy warned me, he says, to stop the machine, you might want to, you might need to push 
pretty heavy on the brake because the machine is 101,000 pounds, you know, on four wheels. So I'm guessing the brakes are not that strong. And so we agreed that I would go like three feet when the rear tires are right on the edge of the trailer and then we would take the boards from under it and build the ramp. And it was going very smoothly, you know, like I did this three feet like I, I didn't even feel anything like because the machine is so heavy it was uh, rolling you know very gently and the guy was watching me from the ground and he says stop stop and I'm like what already you know I didn't even realize that I was right on the edge of the trailer uh, where my ramps are and so then we took the boards there they were two guys these two guys they helped me they they helped me take the chains off like very helpful you know like other guys they can just sit in the truck watch you you know but this way was much faster because i was taking the chains off they were taking the chains off and then they helped me with the boards with the ramps so it, it ended up being a, a pretty good experience and then my landster broker was happy his customer was happy i texted them i i, I sent them a picture of the machine off the trailer like you can see you can see the trailer and then you can see the machine in the snow and i said load delivered we'll send pod shortly and then i took a scan of my uh, signed bill of leading send it to them and i thought hey, wait a second might as well do the factoring paperwork and so i collected my uh, rate confirmation proof of delivery my invoice a picture i always send a picture of the load so that the girls over there know what we what i did and also what i do is i always do a screenshot of the signature in the in the email you know like my broker right when he emails me there's always his name and his position and his phone numbers and his email and i always do a screenshot of that and i send it to uh, to the factoring ladies i say you know my contact at the broker was this and so I said no issues at the, in transit or during delivery but sometimes I need to call the broker you know to verify maybe like maybe they gave me a cash advance or something right but nobody I don't know nowadays nobody gives cash advances uh, I remember there was a couple of loads where uh, there was a lot of expenses, you know, lots of miles, lots of expensive permits. And so I asked them for a cash advance and they always, they don't like it. Uh, when the carrier is saying, oh, can I get some money please up front? They, they always look at you as if you're, you're, you're just contracted, you know, uh, some a rare disease. They don't like it. And it was a station like this yesterday. You see this? They're in the middle. And if the lights are flashing, you have to go in. And that's what happened yesterday, right? So, um, but you know, equipment malfunctions. I was on a complete impression that my booster was fully inflated. Everything was good. And turns out it hardly had any weight. And so because of that, uh, the trailer the trailer got overloaded in the back there you have enough timbers that's definitely a, a must for this kind of machine uh, you need to bring lots of timbers even some cheap ones 
which actually no longer cheap like this stuff right I paid $200 US and then I paid uh, I think it was 200 Canadian uh, in Canada when I was getting ready to 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 come down here and then I just got the invoice from the uh, my permit broker and they want fifteen hundred dollars US for this trip just four states right Missouri Iowa South Dakota uh, North Dakota and then okay Saskatchewan but I only I only ask him to, to give me the American states right I did Saskatchewan myself but check this out the Missouri permit Missouri permit because of all this weight it was eight hundred dollars US 800 bucks and then the Saskatchewan permit was almost uh, 700 Canadian and I'm not even talking about the ticket I got in Saskatchewan that's just I have until June uh, to pay that if I decide so which I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm not gonna not, not gonna do it but I'll fight it I'll fight the ticket get a lawyer so no big deal stuff happens and so yeah if I don't find any loads today for tomorrow that's it I'm packing my stuff I'm very low on def so I'm gonna load some I'm gonna get some def get some fuel and start trucking it's I'm just tired I'm telling you I, it's 2,000 miles from here to Cambridge uh, through Canada so first you hit Saskatchewan then Manitoba and then Ontario because I don't want to sit here you know uh, sometimes I sit here for two weeks right I cannot find a load so I'm not gonna do that today this time uh, my uh, brokers brokers and shippers they have today only today only to book a load oh actually I'm gonna send out that um, you know I do that news release right RGN available so I'm gonna send it out today say that RGN available in Lloydminster Alberta tomorrow Wednesday and my experience with this is that people usually don't read where you where the truck is located right so I would send that out saying truck is available let's say in Edmonton Alberta right and this guy emails me oh I got a load in uh, Baltimore like how do you respond to that without being sarcastic you know like I said did you see my location sir on that little email I said I'm in Edmonton like you want me to drive 3,000 miles to Baltimore Maryland all right where are we so we're coming to the border with uh, Alberta and this guy is slowing down I think he wants to stop and uh, because there's a rest area there's a rest area the border
check this out. Now they have a Volvo here and a Mac. So this is already Lloyd Minster, but this is the bad side. Uh, the oh Cummins. There's the. Uh, This is Saskatchewan, right? It's funny how they have one town in two jurisdictions. Like at least, I would have changed the name, you know, like let's say call it Lloydminster, Alberta, but on the Saskatchewan side, call it something else. Okay, Alberta, three, four, six, three, eight, eight, seven. That's my mileage. And there used to be, there used to be Husky over here. <coughs> I remember stopping a few times and, oh, I think it's still there, but it's a very small one. So I'm gonna park at the same truck stop where I got stuck last time. But this time I'm gonna be smart. Well, actually, it's plus two now. They shouldn't have too much snow in there. But I wanna go around, use the other exit, or entrance rather, and park facing this way because this is where I'm going this is uh, now I'm going uh, northwest right and tomorrow morning I'm pretty sure I'll be driving empty this way east <coughs> but I'll need fuel I'll need def or oh, a and w burger my favorite fast fast food joint. All right, where's the border? I think it's at, at that intersection. Lights are green. I hit a green wave. Green light wave. Зеленая зеленая волна. Police. Where? Oh, this building. Husky. 
So that's the entrance I took last time where I got stuck because there's a hill like this. Maybe I'll park over there with the tankers. There's a hill there, so you can get a rolling in the morning. and these guys still have a uh, ice and snow everywhere oh this is a good location because it's downhill straight Your destination is on the right. so that's why I got stuck last time <laughs> like a foot of snow here but it's all melting Check this out, there's a guy there with a B train parked.
Ковальца up the hill again. so much snow everything is melting Last time I was, what does it say? No parking, vehicle stored at owner's expense. But it's only on that side. Don't see any signs on this side. done with trucking at least for one day this is a nice holiday inn not too far from my truck stop and it's 12 o'clock I, I, I have nowhere to go right I just had lunch and I I decided to walk here and ask him. I said, I understand I'm, I'm very early, but if you guys have any rooms or maybe you want me to pay extra, you know, so for early check-in. And she checked, she checked, uh, see a pretty big TV. She checked uh, 
the room she says it, she doesn't have anything on the top floors but there's one room on the main floor which is this one I said hey I'm okay with that nice so there you go that's the end of my mm, shuttle wagon saga so just had an interesting email somebody's trying to ship a uh, <clears throat> a drill rig drill rig guess how much it weighs 100, 110,000 pounds and I know I moved these drill rigs before and they have this boom right and they always overload uh, they always overload the area of the trailer so I told them I said something like this I would move on 10 axles, like real 10 axles, you know, with uh, 3 plus 2, 3 plus 2 in the back. But I said, permits will be very expensive. I said, I'm going to take a look at my permit website and I can give you an idea how much the permits will cost. And we'll go from there. And they said, we'll give you lots of, uh, lots of warning. So basically this machine is not shipping yet they're just looking for a quote but it would be cool because it's a short run you know it's like my favorite hsd heavy short distance because it just goes from ontario to uh, northeast northeast us and i never did three plus two right i still have to uh, weld those little pieces there uh, so I can use shims because 3 plus 2 would not work with all pins in. So it would be interesting to try to see to use 3 plus 2. Of course, then I'll be probably like 115,000, 115 feet long. This, that's two pilots in New York for sure. I think one pilot in Pennsylvania. Like you have, you need pilots everywhere. 115 feet long, but. I'm already used to being 107 or 110 feet long, so I think I can manage it. So that's just one of the things I was talking about. All right. Thanks for watching. Ciao.